This podcast was created on the lands of the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to their elders past and present and acknowledge their continued custodianship of these lands and waters. We recognise that sovereignty was never ceded and that we are the beneficiaries of stolen land and dispossession, which began over 230 years ago and continues today. You're listening to Make It Shequal, the podcast empowering advertising to get equal. Do you feel represented in Australian advertising? I don't think I do. I am European with a Maltese background, so I am short and I have dark skin and dark hair and I don't really see myself represented that often. I am a mother and I have a seven-year-old daughter, so I think for her sake, it would be awesome to see someone represent, someone similar to myself represented, so she can see that she is, she isn't different and that it's okay to look a little bit different than what you see every day. Over the podcast so far, we've learned how ads have an incredible power to shape and contribute to our culture. They can either promote gender equality or in some cases, they can hinder it. Today, we have very special guests joining us, Phoebe Sloan, a senior copywriter at Cleminger BBDO, and Olivia Altavilla, a director at The Producers. Both of these women are advocates for real, authentic, and diverse portrayals of people in ads, and will be sharing their insights with us today. Their extensive experience behind the scenes will guide us through the opportunities to incorporate diversity and authenticity throughout the ad creative process. Before we delve into the details, let's start with a bit of a broader perspective. Phoebe, starting with you, why do you believe that ads hold such power and influence over our culture and how do they contribute to either promoting or hindering gender equality? I think we're exposed to so many ads a day and, and they, they take on many different forms as well. Uh, you know, gone are the days of just the traditional billboard and the radio ad. There are so many different mediums in which we can experience and connect with brands these days, which is a really exciting thing. You know, we now can um, build connection through so many mediums like digital, social, uh, podcasts like the one we're on today. Uh, we've got, you know, experiential. Uh, we've got so many, so many different ways that we can kind of, I guess, build build trust within our audiences. And I think uh, just just that sh the sheer volume of it too has has such power, and um, also it's direct link to culture. And advertising is very much inspired by culture, but it also very much contributes to it as well. And it can perpetuate um, parts of culture in good and bad ways. And um, I think as as a creative, we definitely strive to to make conversation and to make an impact because we know that being talked about is definitely the more effective way of getting through to our, our consumers. Being talked about is the ultimate, I think, metric of success in our industry. Um, you know, we can, we can send out loads of, of EDMs and, and digital banners all we want, but I think it's the stuff that really cuts through where you're out on the weekend with a friend talking about something you might have seen in an ad. Um, you know, I take the, the Barbie movie uh, marketing as an example at the moment. <laughs> you can't ignore it. It's brilliant. And I think it's such a wonderful example of a brand in in actual culture um, and you can really see the power and the significance that that has as it's sort of playing playing out um, I haven't seen the movie so I'm not sure if it's if it's any good so don't hold me to that but I think there's real power and influence that um, the ads that we create and put out there in the world definitely do have on people and, and how we show people and how we tell those stories so it's I think we, we definitely have a really um a, a responsibility to, to what we create and make and put out there in the world. It's actually quite overwhelming, particularly as a consumer who doesn't really engage in this kind of topic as much to realise just how much we're being marketed to all the time and the subliminal messaging that's coming through that you don't even realise is happening and how powerful it can actually be. I think stereotypes and gender inequality are still quite deeply ingrained in our society and ads obviously have played a significant role in perpetuating these issues. Ollie, in your experience, what do you think are the key opportunities that we have now available within the ad creative process to promote more positive and inclusive portrayals of people? Mm -hmm. It's a great question. I think, you know, for me in the process, I'm the step where I'll get a brief or a script from an agency and that's already been through so many rounds. And so that's kind of when I get it. And then the first thing I try and do is unpack who are these characters, you know, think about them as human beings, like what are their hopes? What are their dreams? What are their 
aspirations, their flaws, like really think about those characters on a human level and kind of ignore if any gender has been attached so far. Just, just really think about them. So sometimes I work with real people. Other times I work with an actor who's portraying a character. So say if I'm working with a, a real person, I'll just talk to them as much as I can because my goal is for every decision to be informed by their like personality and what makes them unique and special and then just kind of ignore the stereotypes that could naturally just kind of play in. Um, so yeah, like on when I did, I did an ad for Vegemite and we had like 10,000 kids audition for that ad and the final, like the final kids that got picked, like I, I got on calls with them and I like chatted to them for half an hour about, about them, about their story, where they come from, what they want to be when they grow up, what their favorite colors are, like, and then I customized all their wardrobe, all their blocking in each scene, all their environments to them. And like, I didn't think as much about their gender. I think if it's coming from a place of just that like truthfulness, I think that's a really nice place to start when you're trying to have, I don't know, um, a landscape that is working towards gender equality. I think if you just really start at a human level, mm. I think that's really important. I think having directors like you yeah. who are bringing such a depth of their approach to all the decisions they're making is going to make a really, really positive difference. Mm. Phoebe, what do you think maybe taking a step back from that level, uh, some ways we can improve the creative process overall, maybe at different stages as well along the way. Definitely, I think the the creative process is so long and I think so many people touch the work, like from, from the beginning, from it being briefed in, from the client, then into agency, um, then we come up with a, a solution in the creative department, it goes back, mm -hmm. it goes for multiple rounds and then when we're happy, we then engage um, you know, wonderful directors like Ollie on board to create the ad. So, so many people throughout the process touch it. And I think mm -hmm. for me, the more diverse and the more, um, you know, unique and, and, and different the people that are contributing to the work will make for a better and, and a more interesting and a more authentic outcome. And I think mm -hmm. ensuring that many different people with many different lived experiences and perspectives and, um, you know, taste, like that kind of thing, um, mm -hmm. all, all impact the output. So I think starting from there and I think who you engage with, like, you know, is, is a really, I think, important point. Um, you know, the, the directors we do pick, the production companies we do work with, the PR agencies we engage, the activation teams, like there are so many parts of the process that I think um, we really need to to really deeply consider, I think, as we go um, to make the work better too and, and more interesting. Yeah, it's so interesting how any kind of positive change in an industry involves players at every step. It's not just sort of at one gateway where there's a gatekeeper and they make yeah. one decision. But I think there's probably a part of the process that maybe has more impact than others and that's casting. That's kind of coming up a lot in our conversations. Ollie, you touched on it a little bit in relation to the Vegemite ad, but mm. what are some of the things more generally, particularly for anyone else listening who has a, a part to play in the casting process, what are some of the things that you take into consideration when casting that really ensures authentic storytelling? I think the biggest thing is approaching it with an open mind. I think sometimes coming into a project I prefer or I love when I get a brief that is just I could go any way with how we cast it and we kind of we work through that creative process to find the right person for it um I think it in saying that I think it's important that I think there's this really hard thing of what we're sometimes used to seeing for instance I come from a family where there probably haven't been great gender role examples and like mm -hmm. my nana's been in the kitchen forever. And so <laughs> you always see that character represented and I understand the argument that though that's what that's what we know, but it's not gonna change if we don't start, I don't know, working on that and like putting like grandpa in the kitchen, you know, mm -hmm. seeing that on screen I just think is so important and I, I understand this and there is always this dialogue around but what's familiar and it's just sometimes that's not right because yeah I think I don't think we're going to make any change if we keep looking at what we're used to because I can speak to that I, mm. it's same with my upbringing but um, I don't know I think there's a lot of unlearning and a lot of just more open-minded approach to certain things that would be fantastic if we all did that.
Yeah, definitely. And I think that's a really good reminder as well in any area, but particularly in this kind of area where you're pushing for change, some kind of social change, mm. it does involve stepping away from familiarity, which often means stepping away from comfort. So there is mm. an element of maybe not shock, but just discomfort when you're doing things that you're not used to seeing. But that's yeah. part of the process of change. But as long as you're ready for that, it's not as jarring 100%. and you know why we're yeah. taking steps towards towards a more positive environment. Mm -hmm. Phoebe, from a slightly different perspective, you also co-founded The Aunties, which is a mentoring and support system for women and marginalised genders working across the creative industry. How has The Aunties made an impact in fostering a more inclusive industry? Yeah, no, um, I think it, it's quite tricky to actually measure the impact um, that The <laughs> Aunties has had, um, partly, mostly due to the fact that we are completely confidential between our mentors and our mentees and we're very very strict on that and making sure that yeah any conversation that's had is you know kept between them but I think um I think we do we do have a lot of anonymous surveys and a lot of them have been extremely positive and I think I just hear verbatim um things around the industry as we go and for me one of my favorite I think favorite measures of that impact um we had we had a senior mentor program last year where we had over 200 industry women in one room together they were all kind of senior executive women I'd never been in a room and, and sort of really seen our industry and all the women in our industry I'm like oh my gosh there you are like we're all here <laughs> like it was, hey guys. It was uh, yeah it was incredible and I think the next morning I received an email from um from a CEO of a, of a big agency and and um they said to me I heard last night was a huge success. It must have been a huge success because I've had three women book in time with me to talk about the progression of their careers this morning, but and it's not even 9.30 a.m. And I think it's wow. those, you just need that support and talking to that objective person um, who's not in your agency and in your bubble and, um, you know, to just have those conversations with, to just go, here's where I'm at, or this is this is going on, what can I do? Um, and just having that, that support and, um, you know, that guidance, I think, to then to move and make decisions and to also not be afraid to make those decisions mm -hmm. too. Um, for me, yeah, it's been a real highlight. It reminds me as well of the power of the choice of words in areas like this, like choosing the word, the name, the aunties, to me evokes mm -hmm. such a warm sense of like safety and support. And I think that's so lovely because it's, you know, you can't make these positive changes and people can't be ready for the discomfort they might fi might face in making those changes unless they feel supported. So congratulations on what you're doing. Amazing, you. amazing work. The Make a Cheekwell podcast is brought to you by Women's Health Victoria and proudly funded by the Victorian government. We would love for you to get involved in our Sheekwell program, an initiative empowering the advertising industry to take action in better shaping how people are represented in the stories they tell and we all consume. Head to sheekwell.com.au, that's S-H-E-Q-U-A-L.com.au for more information, practical resources and training opportunities. Now back to the episode. Awesome. For both of you, um, you know, we're so lucky to have you here with all your expertise. What would your advice be for anyone else in the industry at kind of any level? To, what can they do to actively contribute to promoting gender equality through their work, especially if it maybe isn't in casting or it isn't in the more obvious areas? What are the things that people can do to sort of, yeah, help along the way? I mean, I think the biggest thing you can do is have a diverse team and just, I think, there's, I think tokenism really comes into play when you're just ticking a box and maybe the team behind that weren't thinking deep enough about it. But I think if you have a diverse team with, you know, multiple experiences and perspectives, I think that's what's, and a space where you can just keep having these conversations and that, you know, with that team, I think that's when the end product is something you can be really proud of and is working towards more equality. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. Definitely. I think keeping, yeah, Ollie mentioned it before, keeping an open mind and, and being and listening and also I think placing trust in the people that you're working with. I think, you know, the ag the agency in particular has has a really strong role to play into to backing up everything we do with, you know, the research, the data. Um, and I think having having that trust within the process, I think, um, really allows you to have really open conversations and really important ones and sometimes really tough ones where, um, you know, you do have to leave your biases at the door and we do have to have, uh, you know, really hard conversations. But I think if, if you have an open mind and, um, you know, you, you, you have that trust with, with the agency, the people mm. that you work with, um, the, work, the work itself is also going to be better. And I think 
even what you said earlier, Sarah, about um, embracing discomfort or, or kind of going into the unknown. I mean, that's the essence of a, of a creative idea and, and an original mm -hmm. thought. And, um, you know, sometimes if it hasn't been made out there in the world and it hasn't been created, it's probably a good thing. It's probably a good mm -hmm. idea. So I think keeping that trust and that open mind and, and having a bit of faith in the process mm -hmm. too, I think um, will massively make the work and our industry better. And speaking of that, that faith in the industry and, and in positive change, do you guys think, I mean, obviously we've, we've come a really long way, but we also still have, you know, quite a long way to go. How are you feeling about the future of the industry and the direction that we're going in right now? I'm feeling really hopeful. I think um, we've definitely, even in the last seven or so years I've been in the industry, I've noticed massive change, particularly at the top. Um, I think there's more, uh, you know, particularly more women um, at the top now in those decision-making roles, which is, you know, critical. <laughs> but I think there's still a really long way to go overall. And and, in, and there's so many more aspects of yeah, intersectionality and, and all those kinds of things that need to stay. I think for me, one of the biggest problems of our industry is that that drop off rate around um, motherhood and, and parenting. And I think mm -hmm. if we can try and find ways to, to keep more mums um, in our industry, I think, you know, we, we will have more women at the top and hopefully ones that stay um, here for a long time. Amazing. Yeah, Holly, do you have any thoughts to add? I mean, yes, I'm I do. I'm really hopeful and I can definitely see you know, different behavioural changes, but I think it's exactly as what Phoebe just said. I think the biggest issue that we come and what we face is, um, yeah, to do with like parenthood and how that impacts your career and then therefore who ends up having these decision-making roles. So I think 100% if we can do more to just, yeah, even that out and I don't know, I just that's the biggest hurdle I constantly see within, you know, production companies and um, then the people that we work with from agency and from, yeah, from the top, I think that would make a huge difference if we can really work towards making that fairer for everyone. Mm. That is incredible advice for others in the industry on how they can better push for, you know, more realistic and authentic portrayal. But also across your years of experience, have there been times that you can think of where you've had to stand up and push harder or felt, you know, uncomfortable with the way things stand to, to push for more realistic and authentic portrayal? And what are your tips for maybe anyone else who finds themselves in that situation to, to stand up? Yeah. I mean, there definitely have been times where that has happened. I think my process and I guess my my morals are that I'm always going to ask the question. I think I've set that as like a ground rule for myself. If I feel like I've received a script or a brief or somewhere in the process, I think something is, you know, getting into a place that's probably a stereotype or not, you know, a great feeling for me, I always very politely ask that question you know is you know any an example is maybe um does it need to be mum in the kitchen like could, could that be dad but sometimes I ask that question if I have a brief and look I'm I don't always get the final decision I definitely don't like that's that's going to come from much higher up than me but I think I owe it to myself to always ask that question and then if the answer is is no, or you know, this is the this is the reason there's there's research or there's like this justification about it, I think I just then I just go, okay, how can we still make this feel authentic? And what are the other ways that we can make this feel more inclusive? If you know, I guess we do know we're heading towards an area that does have a stereotype. Um, I think it's then about finding all the little details and things that we can bring into that that's just gonna make it that bit more authentic and not just this like surface level stereotype. I also love that you said you can ask the question politely and yeah. gently because <laughs> as someone who's petrified of confrontation, yeah. sometimes the idea of standing up for something, even if you're passionate about it, is really scary in a context, yeah. especially if you're not right up in the senior, you know, mm. or, or the big decision making roles. But yeah. asking the question can be done in a way that's, you know, not sort of necessarily aggressive or overwhelming. Yes, <laughs> yes no, I it's not in my nature to um, I don't I don't really have a loud voice. So I generally just like <laughs> I bring it in quite um, swiftly. 
<laughs> into the, like a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's, sometimes it's received really well and it, it's this beautiful situation where you have this open dialogue with the client and the agency and you get an excellent outcome. And then sometimes you just have to work a bit harder. Mm. And I think something that this is remind you know, these conversations have really reminded us of is that for businesses, equality and authentic portrayal is an important priority. It's not the only one they're thinking of. So sometimes it's literally that Mm. no one has asked the question. It's not on a a purposeful omission. Sometimes you do just need someone to go, hey, exactly. You're thinking of a thousand things, but there's a thousand and one, and um, you just need the reminder. Yeah, definitely. Like we're in the business of creative problem solving. Like that's Mm -hmm. it's our job to have a business problem and try and solve it in a really unique way. And I think because we, that, that is essentially like what we do, you know, when we do have situations like that, that arise, we, we present a solve, we present a solution every time where it's like, okay, if we can't have this, can we have this? Or if they're not wearing that, can we put them in this? Mm -hmm. And if there's reason and justification there, and and we're so fortunate to have so many um, incredibly intelligent people that also sit outside the creative part, uh, creative department as well Mm -hmm. uh, where we've got client management we've got planners and strategists so we have also that support to really lean on to go no this is genuinely the best solution because of x y and z and you know to have those conversations and and again I think it was what I was talking about earlier around building that trust between I think client agency production if that's all aligned then the Mm. outcome's generally really really good or if it's not we need to kind of pause and have that conversation and if the relationship's strong enough um, then then we can have that space to properly have that that Mm. conversation as well. Is that something that with your work with the aunties you get asked about or you have people coming to you sort of worried about how to speak up if there's a situation like that? I think so I think I think because um, there are so many of us um, aunties out there, you know, we're in, I think we're 400 plus um, wow, in Melbourne. Yeah, there's amazing. there's a lot of us, which I think shows um, the strength of, of also just how there's no one right way to go about things mm. and situation and everyone's advice and experience is so different. And hopefully our network and um, the way that people can, can kind of draw from that expertise and share those experiences can kind of at least help give some sort of, I guess, place to start when when experiencing those situations. Um, but again, we don't know exact specifics because of the confidentiality yeah. um, agreement, <laughs> but um, I hope lots of fruitful discussion about that is, is taking place um, right now. I think that is also the sort of flip side of the coin to change is often fear. And it's not, it's not fear of positive change, it's just fear of change, no matter what that looks like. Have you guys found that fear has played a role Maybe not even for yourselves, but just have you seen it kind of playing out in this area? I mean, yeah, I've definitely seen brands fear change and fear what that's going to look like for them if they went down a route that is, you know, is too far from what they've been doing. Is that going to affect, you know, their sales? Or I've been there when those conversations have been happening Mm. and I, I, I understand it. Um, but I still, I'm still going to ask, I think yeah. <laughs> what I'll take from it is that, yeah, I, I understand there is a lot more going on than, you know, there's a lot of business decisions going on at the same time. That's our industry. Um, yeah, but I'm still going to ask cause I feel like, I don't know, take that risk. Mm. Just. I think talking yeah. the talk, it's it's not enough at the yeah. moment. And I think yeah. we've now got generations that we're starting to communicate with and build connection with that, you know, if you don't do something, it will be called out. And mm-hmm. um, I think there is also that that pressure from, from, yeah, Gen Z that's erupted that I think really holds brands accountable. And I think that's brilliant. It means that hopefully we, we can actually push mm-hmm. positive change forward too because it's in the interests of your your, yeah. your audience and your target market um, to, to really do that. It's, it's sort of not the bare minimum anymore, which mm-hmm. is really exciting. And at the end of the day, I think it's also now possible to say that progressive portrayals and positive business outcomes, like they are in line, you know, maybe they, they weren't mm-hmm. when we were sort of earlier on in the spectrum, but now it's like possible to say this is going to be make business sense as well as like yeah. moral sense. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Well, we are so lucky to have had you guys and your expertise on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah. But yeah, I'm, I'm an overweight, white, heterosexual male in my early 40s who was born in Australia and only speaks English. I'm married but don't have kids. Um, whilst I think there's a lot of 
representation of of these certain characteristics of mine in in adverts um i don't really see someone like me or how i see myself in the advertising i'm exposed to two amazing women in this episode contributing such depth to our conversations and reminding us that australia really wants to see authentic genuine realistic and equal representation of people in ads and that that requires all stages of the creative process to be involved in creating that positive change the auntie sounds like a wonderful initiative connecting women across the industry and across all levels of seniority as well and the conversation around motherhood also highlights the need for more women at the top in decision-making roles. That's actually the first time that had come up in our conversation, so I look forward to investigating that more. But that also involves male allyship, which is coming up with our next guest, Dalton Henshaw. We will be talking with Dalton about all things bullfrog, gender equality and male allyship, as I just mentioned. We will also be welcoming back to the show the wonderful Lauren Zappa, a member of the Sheikwal team who joined us in episode three and will be back for next episode episode's conversation. You won't want to miss this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to share the show to help us spread the message of equal advertising. And of course, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes of Make It Sheikwal.